What's up everyone and welcome back to my channel. So this is going to be the third and final part to my tutorial series on how to create an app with no code. Now if you haven't seen the first two parts, I'm going to link them somewhere in this video. Uh, but with all of that being said, let's get started. So for this last part of the tutorial, we're going to actually take what we learned in part two with the databases from Bravo and we're going to create a list of states that we can select from and when we select a certain state, it's going to give us a detailed page on the COVID tracking numbers for that specific state. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to jump back into Bravo. I'm going to show you how to create a few more databases we're going to use for this app. And then I'm going to show you how to connect those databases and bind that data to our design that we have imported to Bravo. All right, so jumping straight into Bravo, the first thing we're going to do um, is we're going to take a look at the two screens that we're going to be working with in this tutorial. So the two screens in this design we're going to be working with is this state selector screen which is going to show us the different states in the US so we can uh, select a specific state that we want to view the details of. And then I have this home screen or the detailed screen of that specific state. So in the detail screen, we should have the state up top. We should have the positive cases for that state, the death count for that state, along with a weekly recap showing the date and then the positives and the deaths of past days within that week. Now, the first one we're gonna look at is the state selector. We're gonna populate on this screen a list of the different states. Now, before we do that, what we're gonna to have to do is get data that gives us a list of those states. So again, if I look back at this design, I only have one element here, and this one element, which has a placeholder right now that says state name, instead of creating 50 different buttons that I have to connect or bind 50 different pieces of data to, what I can do is create a database that gives me a list. Now that list will have a list of the 50 states and what Bravo can then do is create this element for each of those 50 elements or data points that I have in that list. So again, first thing we're going to do is jump into Bravo. I'm going to go to my data library um, in my COVID tracker database. I'm going to create a list of the 50 states that I need to make. So I went ahead and actually made a state list request here. Now I am getting it from this URL right over here. Now when I hit send and if I get that data, I'll populate that. I'm just going to check off the state name and I'm going to name this request state list here. Now if I go back to my projects and I open up my app and if I go to that same state selector page, what I can do is select my COVID-19 tracker database. I'm going to select the state list um, request. Now before going into the state name, that element, that text element, under the state selection, which is my container for that whole button, I'm going to select that. And what you'll notice here is in this drop down, there'll be none, but there'll be this data with brackets. And the, that bracket means this here is a list. So what I'm telling Bravo to do right here is this button, this state name button, I'm going to duplicate that button for every list item within this list and in this case it is going to be the 50 states so I should have 50 of those buttons. Now if I go into that and I select state name I can then from that drop down select the state the state name or the one that we checked off earlier and what this will do is it will change state name to the abbreviation of whatever state is being populated into the list. So that is how we're gonna do the state selector. So how are we gonna get a list of, 
for different states. Now we're going to go into the detailed page where we're going to pull up that specific data for the state that we selected. Now this one's going to be a little trickier because we instead of making a database for every single state, you know, that's going to leave us with 50 databases that we have to uh, create and then 50 databases we would have to connect to 50 different pages. Uh, that's going to be a lot of work. So to get the information that I'm going to use in the detail page, I'm going to create another database. So I'm going to go back into my COVID-19 database here. Now I made a sample one, which is called day one right here. Now, in order to grab the information for that specific state, I'm going to have to make sure I make a request that gives me that information for that state and that state only. So you're going to see something a little new in this request URL on this database. Uh, right over here, I'm going to have in curly uh, braces um, the word state. And what this is, is if I go right below there, there's this section right here. Um, I have parameters and in parameters, I have state, which is my key. And then I have a placeholder value, which is AL right now. Now this key is referencing to this state in the curly braces up here in my request URL. And basically what this is doing is whatever state I select from my list, it's going to take the abbreviation and replace that state or this part of my URL here with whatever I select. So if I go ahead and run this, I'm going to get the data for whatever state I select. Now in my detail page, I do have a weekly results as well. So if we look up here, this data zero, zero meaning this is the first item um, or the most current day for this state. So I'm going to select all the information that I need from death to the name of the state for um, and also the last updated date and the positive increase. Now, if I hit this drop down here and I select one, this is basically saying this is the information from yesterday. So because I'm again showing a weekly detailed list, I'm going to check off um, what I need for that one. So death increase, positive increase, and the date so I can show what date I'm posting up on my detail page. And then if I go to two, this is going to be two days ago and so forth. So I can check off all the information until I have all seven days that I need um, so that I can show a weekly recap in the state detail. So again, using that key value here allows us to change this request URL depending on the state that we choose from our state list. Now, if I go back into my projects and I open up my demo app here and I go to my detail page, I can again select my database, the request I'm using, which was the day one, and I can go ahead and fill out all my information I need here with everything that we checked off earlier. The same thing goes for the weekly results on here. So I have my day one, I can go ahead and fill in the date, the positives, the deaths, and I can do that for all the days because again, I went ahead and checked off all that information in the database when we requested it. All right, so now that we have all of our databases created and we binded all of that data to our Bravo app, let's go ahead and I'm going to open up the Bravo Vision app. I'll have a screen over here of what I'm looking at so you folks can follow along. Um, the first app screen that I have opened is the choose a state screen. So if you remember from our initial design, I only created the first top element as kind of a placeholder element. And when we did the data binding and we did a list of states, you can see that Bravo actually went ahead and created one of those elements for each of the list items in that database. So we can see now we have all 50 of our states here. Now, if we select a state and I'm gonna go ahead and select Hawaii here, we can see now in the detailed page of that state that I selected, up at the top, it's gonna say 
the abbreviation of the state I selected and we'll have the case numbers and the weekly data for that specific state. So again, this is Hawaii and we can see 198 positive, death at two. We can see the state up top is HI. Now if I go back and I select a different state, for example, let's say California, we'll let it load. At the very top, you can see now it says CA for California and you can see the same exact design but different data is going to be inputted in for the different areas. Of course, it's going to be matching the state that we selected. So instead of us creating detailed pages or designs for each state individually, we can go ahead and create a, in a sense, template and use the databases that we create in Bravo to populate and fill out the data on that screen. Cool, so I hope you folks enjoyed this tutorial on how to create an app with no code. Again, we're using Bravo Studios and Figma to create this app. Uh, let me know what you folks think about this tutorial series. I plan on doing a few more like this. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and until next time, see ya.